The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you sincerely. It's with, with my pleasure to stand and speak on uh, Bill C-29 again in this, in this House. I'm not sure my remarks will be as colourful, as passionate as the prior exchange, but uh, I'll try my best. Um, when, I, when I stand and speak on Bill C-29 and think about Budget 2016, I think about where it takes our economy, I think about where it takes the residents of my riding of Vaughan Woodbridge forward, and I think about what it does for those middle class Canadians, those working Canadian Canadians in our country that are working every day and putting food on their table and saving money for their children's uh, future, for their children's school, uh, for their education, for their sports, and so forth. I think about what our budget and what our government is delivering for Canadians on a daily basis, whether it's the Canada Child Benefit, whether it's the tax cut that benefits 9 million Canadians over the last year and $20 billion of tax relief over the next five years. I think about the enhanced CPP that our government came to in a historic agreement with the provinces. I think about all these measures we are putting in place which will strengthen our economy, which will translate into faster economic growth, and fundamentally, which will translate into good paying jobs for all Canadians. In this part of the speech, I look at what we've done with the, bank, the, the Banking Act and, or the Bank Act, excuse me, and some of the regulations that we've uh, codified and changed. I was there, Mr. Speaker, when the financial crisis hit Canada I rem uh, and, and the global financial crisis hit the world. And I remember seeing some of the, the banks in the United States not make it due to a liquidity crisis. And during that time, I saw the strength, the regulations of the Canadian banking industry come through. I saw how strong our banks were, whether it was tier one capital levels, the low delinquency rates within the, uh, the Canadian housing market. I saw the regulators, where it was OSFI or the Bank of Canada, uh, the superintendent of financial institutions, how everyone was coordinating and working together to ensure that we had a strong, strong banking sector. And we continue to evolve on that line. We continue to work with the Department of Finance, OSFI, the Bank of Canada, to ensure that we have a strong housing sector. Mr. Speaker, it gives me great pleasure to talk about the Canada Child Benefit. That helps nine out of every ten Canadians, Canadian families, $2,300 a month extra, excuse me, a year extra that Canadian families will receive. How it will lift 300,000 children out of poverty in Canada. That's something that I think all my colleagues should applaud and all colleagues from all parties should vote for. I'm surprised they haven't and they don't. Um, Mr. Speaker, the CCB is transformational. The CPP enhancement is, is historic. The tax cut to the middle class Canadians is a centerpiece. Mr. Speaker, we are moving with BC uh, Bill C-29 and Budget 2016. Uh, our economy forward, we're building a stronger Canada, a more diverse uh, and inclusive country with, with uh, better economic growth. And we are in a period uh, in, I would say, in world economic history, which we look at and see what's going on in the world. And Canada is standing out as a beacon of light strong fiscal framework that we continue to, to improve, um, a balance sheet that's the envy of the world, a AAA credit rating. Mr. Speaker, I cannot, I cannot be more proud to be uh, on the Standing Committee on Finance and to ensure that Canada moves forward in a strong way. And Mr. Speaker, it speaks to, you know, on a personal level, my two children at home, Eliane and Natalia, my two girls who I miss fondly um, when I'm here in Ottawa, that they have brighter futures. They're four and six. And you know what? I'm here as, as the representative for my riding, and I'm fighting to make sure that their future is one hell of a, excuse me, one, uh, one, he, one heck of a bright one. Mr. Speaker, I'll, I'll stop my, my remarks there and look forward to Q&A. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments? Uh, commentaire, the Honourable Member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my colleague for his remarks. and. Uh, I've asked this question a number of times. In fact, I asked the, the member from Winnipeg North yesterday why, why he actually moved a clause removal from the bill. And then at the votes last night actually voted against his own amendment. So I wonder if my colleague could answer that question. But another question that has failed to go answered in this debate is the question of when this Liberal government intends to return our budget to a balance. Mr. Speaker, Continuing to build on the deficits we have is adding unbelievable amounts of interest cost. Uh, in fact, uh, interest costs will go up by $15 billion per year over the next four. So I'm wondering if my colleague could answer that. The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Um, thank you for that question from my Honourable Colleague. What I will say is the Conservatives in the 10 years of, uh, of governing added about $155 billion of, of new debt 
uh, onto Canada's total debt uh, and ran deficits for basically every year and inherited a $15 billion surplus when they came to power. So nice job, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> uh, within, you know, in, in, in my years of experience in working on uh, Bay Street and Wall Street, one of the measures that many of us have looked at is basically what's a debt to GDP ratio. And that ratio is around the mid 30s right now. And we intend to keep it in that area and can continue to continue to decline it over a year over year basis. That's what I say is a proper measure. And what I would add is that we inherited not only a deficit uh, on a fiscal side, we inherited a deficit in terms of infrastructure deficit, an educational deficit, and we had to invest. We had to invest in social infrastructure and green infrastructure. And Mr. Speaker, that's what we continue to do. Thank you. Guests may come on fire. Questions or comments? All right, Deputy de Long. The Honourable Member for Longueuil, Saint Hubert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank my colleague for his speech, and I'd remind him that for the average Quebecer, they they don't have a lot of sympathy for credit card companies. For example, there's a business owner in my riding who told me how credit cards are way too expensive, for, both for consumers and for retailers. So I'm wondering why, when the government came to power, and now, of course, they always said throughout the campaign that everything was going to be great, but now we're facing omnibus bills again. And the real problem is uh, the, ta the uh, abusive rates of credit cards. Now, they're happy to sell off our infrastructures uh, to their banking friends, and then th they're increasing the, uh, the deficit as well, while the bank, uh, banks are getting uh, higher interest rates. So why are you giving the banks priority over ordinary citizens? Uh, merci beaucoup pour la question. Thank you very much for the question. That is that I'm, I'm very proud of our government's work in working with the province of Quebec and all the infrastructure funding that we've announced over the last several months for, for La Belle Provence. Uh, and what I would like to add, you know, our government is very sm supportive and we understand full well the importance of, of small and medium enterprises and we'll do everything within our wealth wherewithal to make sure they succeed from coast to coast to coast. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, questions and comments? Can I say comment? The Honourable Member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me try again. Uh, during the Finance Committee's hearings on pre-budget consultations, Mr. Speaker, uh, the committee heard from many people across Canada, many experts who are, are cautioning this government about going further and further into debt. In fact, Mr. Speaker, I want to just quote from the Macdonald Laurier, <coughs> Laurier Institute, quote, setting out a clear and credible plan to eliminate the deficit in, the, in particular should be the government's top budget priority. And he put it to the committee as well. With respect, your top priority, it should be your top priority as well. Failing to do so risks setting us on a path of protracted deficit and increasing long-term costs or long-term opportunity costs. In this regard, I'd encourage the government to reconsider the enactment of fiscal rules such as balanced budget legislation. Mr. Speaker, could my colleague explain why his government, immediately upon taking office, reversed the balanced budget legislation that our government enacted, which would have kept us from this precarious position of going further and further into deficit financing? Thank you, Mr. The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for that question. Uh, my colleague. What I will say is that our government ran on a platform of investing in Canada and investing in Canadians, and that's what we plan to do, and that's what we're executing on. It's a $180 billion program to invest in infrastructure. The, the, uh, my member here op opposite, uh, they left us a huge infrastructure deficit. We are looking at the world environment. We have a period of very, very low interest rates. Every individual, uh, every expert uh, that came to Finance Committee encouraged the governing party to invest in infrastructure to take advantage of the low interest rates that currently we uh, that are that are basically globally um, and to use that opportunity to invest in Canada and invest in Canadians and that's what we're going to continue to do thank you mr. speaker questions and comments the honorable member for Laurentide Labelle thank you mr. speaker the uh, over over the 10 years from 2006 2015 well nine years the conservatives managed to balance two budgets which were inherited from the liberals and then throw us into deficit in 2008, and then spend $160 billion of new debt without actually having anything to show for it. The, when we 
when you buy a car, the value of your car drops over time. That's what the consumer said of the $160 billion. When you buy a house, it generally retains its value. It's an investment. Um, I wonder if the member could, could speak to the value of the gazebos we acquired and the fake lakes and so forth, if, if they could have done a little bit better with that investment they did over those nine years. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Well, I do, I do remember uh, quite well the gazebo that was built. Um, I haven't really visited, or visited it or anything, so I can't describe what it looks like, but uh, I, I do understand it was, uh, it was an investment made in, in one of the members' communities. Not sure quite why. Uh, what I will say is that our, our government is continuing to invest in Canada and Canadians. If you look at our Canada Child Benefit, uh, if you look at our infrastructure program, whether it's green infrastructure, social infrastructure, if it's daycare, helping daycare centers rebuild, if it's helping for putting an investment in women's shelter, you know, we are doing what Canadians expected us to do and what Canadians wanted us to do when they voted us and gave us our mandate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask my colleagues, and in fact, uh, I ask this question of all my Liberal colleagues, is how they can stand in this House and say time after time after time that they were left with a deficit when the Parliamentary Budget Officer himself and their Finance Department clearly said that we left the government with a huge surplus. In fact, over a billion dollar surplus. So, Mr. Speaker, I'd like him to correct the record for this House and for all Canadians and let them know that the Conservative government left the Liberal government as they came into power with a huge surplus. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the question. What I will say to my Honourable colleague, colleague is, very simply, I'm here to build a better Canada along with my colleagues and to make sure that, that my children, uh, who uh, are growing up in, in this wonderful country of ours, have a bright future ahead. And that's why we're making the necessary investments in infrastructure, be it social, uh, green, uh, you know, community housing, uh, introducing the Canada Child Benefit, those key investments that will provide long, more inclusive and higher growth rates for the economy. Thank you. Questions and comments? Guys, say comment on the Honourable Member for St. John's East. Uh, following up on that, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask the, the member more about the conservative deficits they left us, not only financial ones, but deficits in staffing levels in government departments, uh, deficits in supports for veterans, uh, deficits in support for the poorest Canadians and children. And I'm hoping the, uh, the member can just elaborate a little more on all the good we're doing to undo the, the other social fabric deficits and infrastructure deficits and government uh, support deficits that the previous government left this government with. The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to my colleague, Honourable Colleague, for asking me. Um, you know, my focus here uh, as a representative for Vaughan Woodbridge is very simple, is to make sure that we're working hard day in, day out to provide a better future for my, the residents I represent, but for all Canadians. And that's what our government is doing. That's what our plan is, ex is, is, uh, is put, the plan we put forward, and that's why we're executing on it. Whether it's a Canada Child Benefit, whether it's the measures contained in Bill C-29 that do, deal with tax fairness, that deal with tax evasion and tax avoidance measures that are, are in Bill C-29. Whether it's our regulations um, dealing with the, the Bank Act to make sure that Canadians from coast to coast to coast know that uh, the, the banking system is sound and stable, that there are people that they can turn to if they have concerns. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Come, uh, il est 17.